All right. Hello, hello. Sorry, I have a very loud voice, so I always do this little test to see how much I have to project, which I don't think I have to that much because we have two mics here, which is really cool. Surround sound. Uh-oh. Okay. So thank you again. But I have to start by apologizing for my ignorance. I've been speaking to Unitarian Universalist congregations in Orange County now probably for a decade. And of course, Ustedes at Tapestry are my mothership. I have learned, because you folks have asked me to come more than the other ones, and nothing against the other ones, of course. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I have learned so much from you, you folks, over those years about justice, witness, and righteousness, and the bravery of doing this in a region like Orange County, like South County, that historically hasn't liked any of those qualities. But it wasn't until I got asked to do this lecture that I learned that Unitarian Universalists have seven principles that you affirm and promote. A guide for living. What are you all, a bunch of Catholics? <laughs> I'm Catholic, so I could say that. I kid, I kid, of course. Nearly all societies, faith groups, small and large communities have, if not straight up rules, at least ideals on how to live and treat others in order to create a better world. And I should have known Unitarian Universalists would do the same. So I took a look at your seven principles, and they're great. It explains a lot about why you folks do the things that you do. Respect every person. Respect yourself. Fight for justice. Search for truth. I'm paraphrasing to the choir here, obviously, so I'm not going to go on. I'm just surprised that the seven principles don't get as much play in the United States as the Ten Commandments or the Torah or even Jordan Peterson's gibberish. Some of you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> if more people followed your principles, this country would be a far better place. But I'm not here to talk about the seven principles. I've been asked to talk about a proposed eighth principle, which I'm going to read here just in case there's people here or at, or at home who aren't UU members. And I quote, journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse multicultural beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in, order, in ourselves and our institutions. A lot of words for a simple concept. Hate sucks. <laughs> I've seen some pushback from UU members in other congregations that this proposed eighth principle is redundant and woke and therefore doesn't need to be adopted. I know this congregation has yet to adopt, at least according to your website, am I correct? Okay, yes. just want to make sure. Um, where am I? Okay, here. Uh, you know, and you're supposed to vote for it or against it at your annual meeting next June. I will not think less of tapestry if y'all don't adopt it because it is your congregation. I can't understand the superficial argument against the eighth principle. Why put, word, why put into words and adopt something we were already called to do? That's an understandable stance, but it's not a radical stance. And being a radical is how you get things done. That's why I offer my endorsement as a non-UU for adoption of the eighth principle, but as a citizen of Orange County, especially because all of you here are living it. We live in Orange County, after all, where racism and oppression of the other is in our collective DNA. And the good people like here fight it every day. But now it's time to proclaim this fight as part of your very identity as Universalist Unitarians, as members of Tapestry. I was asked to talk on this point specifically because I guess I'm a manifestation of the Eighth Principle. I have spent 17 years fighting the old, nasty Orange County every day as a reporter, and I saw it transform from a racist hellhole into, well, a less racist hellhole? <laughs> true, sadly. <laughs> but it's definitely a better place. And it didn't happen because people just sat back and denounced hate. It happened because of brave individuals who dared stand up to hatred and proceeded to try and dismantle racism and oppression at every opportunity and told the world exactly what they were doing and why and gathered, like, gathered with like-minded people to do so. Everything that the Eighth Principle calls for. It happened because of people like me. At this point, most of you have heard my story. I've spent way too much of my career repeating it. But again, I'm making no assumptions about who is in the audience. 
whenever I speak. So the short of it about how I was able to fight racism and live up to the eighth principle is simple. I'm a Mexican in Orange County. Nothing else. My very being, my very being is one where assumptions and prejudices are thrown at me just because of my ethnic background. And it's a far easier fight for me than my mom and her, and her siblings had growing up in Anaheim in the 1960s. I am lucky that I live in the era that I live with the tools that I have and the community that now exists bigger than ever. And yet I know there's still a lot of work to do. I'm teaching a course right now at Chapman University, my alma mater, and it's a great class. Latinx History of Orange County. The title alone, the title. When I graduated Chapman in 2001, multicultural students, group, student groups like Mecha, to which I belonged, and the Black Student Union were begging for a multicultural room not even a center. And the administration at the time said it was not just unnecessary, but dangerous. Why do you gotta bring up racism when we're all colorblind? <laughs> Why do you gotta bring up race when we're all supposed to be global citizens? As I point out to my students today, this has been the Orange County way since its start. There's nothing wrong here, and we're definitely not racists. Why, some of our best friends are Mexican. <laughs> But things can change if we say that they're going to change. Again, I'm preaching to the choir. Many of you have lived here a long time and know this. Some of you may have even been born here and lived it. But how many of you know how hate this deep, this hatred in Orange County goes and how difficult it is to root out? It's there, especially here in South County, it's there the names of streets and neighborhoods that celebrate a Spanish Spanish. Spanish fantasy heritage where white made right. It's there in the orange groves that we lionize from our past in freeway art and the county seal and a lot of city seals as symbolic of a bucolic wonderland, a memory that doesn't acknowledge the Mexican laborers who picked all that citrus like my grandfather's, their reward for that wonderland, terrible pay and life in a segregated society that forced Mexican children to attend rundown schools. OC hate continues in the rhetoric of too many city councils and school boards who are afraid of undocumented immigrants and trans people and street vendors and even more afraid to teach children about their own history or read from certain books. These are not nice words to listen to. These are not nice thoughts to have and elaborate on, but we must keep them in mind if we want to reach that beloved community. That's perhaps my favorite part of the eighth principle because Orange County is not a beloved community. It is a damned community, but it is our community, which is why we, must, why we must fight for its soul. I didn't always criticize Orange County the way I've spent my career doing and the way I'm talking right now. Why, when I was growing up, my goal was actually to live here in South County, where worries never happen and everyone dumps all their bad things on Santana. <laughs> That all changed in 1999, when the Anaheim Union High School District Board of Trustees voted to sue Mexico for $50 million for educating the children of illegal immigrants. Those, act, not too long ago when you think about it, those actions infuriated me, and not just because I had friends who were undocumented and because my father came to this country in the trunk of a Chevy. I was especially angry because it betrayed everything I had ever been taught about this country that all men are created equal, that we wanted to form a more perfect union. These words became signposts for Americans on how to think of ourselves because they were written down as a set of principles for all of us to aspire to. The Anaheim Union High School District, by passing their resolution, their hateful resolution, was announcing to the world that they sought to do the same. Words matter, published words matter, stated words matter. They can help or they can hurt. The resolution thankfully ended up going nowhere, but I am grateful for the moment of hate because it led me to the path that I have followed all my life, especially my career. Shortly after the school district's move, I committed myself to staying in Anaheim and to fight. I became an activist, and as a brief aside, as I was saying earlier, one of our gathering points for activism in Anaheim in the early 2000s was the Unitarian Universalist Church right across the street from the Anaheim police station. <laughs> So you protest police brutality, then you go right across the street and you try to see if anyone's spying on you from outside. <laughs> Amazing. So I, my, my relationships with you folks have been almost from the start of my adult life. 
Then I became a reporter who adopted yet another written maxim, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. I tackled corruption and history and dirty cops and pedophile priests, but especially racism because that was the biggest sin of them all in this land. For my work, I was mocked every step of the way. I was too negative. I was a liar. I was a hater. I was a liberal who should move to Los Angeles. <laughs> I was a Mexican, but I didn't care. I did the work because it needed to be done. And I also did the work in the hope that like-minded people would rise up against the lords of Orange County. I'm not gonna take credit for all the good OC has today, but I can brag that many of the people doing the good work were inspired by my words and actions. I can boast that I introduced good people from across OC to other good people in OC and even to LA, and they created countywide coalitions and movements that are really just starting to take off, a beloved community in a damned land. I had a platform few others had, and damn straight I used it. By the time I was forced out of my former newspaper, Orange County was ready to show the world it was different. Voters elected an all-democratic congressional delegation for Orange County in 2018, the first time this ever happened. We rejected Donald Trump in 2020, just like we did in 2016. Progressive, diverse city councils sprouted in Santana and Costa Mesa. Huntington Beach had a liberal democratic majority for about a year and a half. <laughs> and then Satan came back. <laughs> but the faith is still there. This is not Richard Nixon's Orange County anymore. Hell, it's not my Orange County anymore. And I'm happy about that, but I'm not satisfied. More people need to rise up. By adopting an eighth principle, ustedes a tapestry would make the bold declaration that rising up against evil is central to your mission, that it's not just good enough to be a good person anymore, we must all be actively fighting. I cover all of Southern California now for the LA Times and I love it, I really do. But when I think about the Orange County of today, I really do feel like Moses at the mountaintop. I was allowed to see this better Orange County that is within our eyesight, that I had labored so long to help change, but then I was cast out professionally and I'm probably never going to return. I don't look back because I know what I did. I wanted to help make a better place and we're getting there. I wanted to inspire others to stay here and fight and more and more people are. I wasn't just actively rejecting Orange County's putrid politics. I was actively trying to dismantle them. That's what I think the genius of the eighth principle ultimately is. To merely say something bad is okay, but okay is not enough in this world, in this time. To say that racism and oppression is bad is okay, but it's not enough to eradicate it. The eighth principle is a call to action and a promise to act. Those of us who have the privilege to be able to fight publicly should. That is tapestry. Those of us who can make public statements about how to create a better life for all should. That is tapestry. Tapestry, 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 tapestry. <laughs> a beloved community. I should have ended there, right? That's okay, but I want to put one final line. A beloved community whose work is just beginning and who's ready for it. Gracias and God bless. <laughs>